Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, AJ Hogue, where AJ's more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's AJ with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Do not fear. Do not panic. That's our topic today. Do not fear. Do not panic. Talking about disaster preparation and uh, survival, survival preparation, whatever term you want to use. Of course, connected to the the coronavirus uh, panic that's happening now that the media is creating. So anyway, um, we're going to talk about that. First of all, I know you want to speak English fluently, you want to speak powerfully, you want to speak confidently, and you will speak English effortlessly when you join my VIP program. You join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. You need to commit. Don't quit. You'll see our best members, the ones who have the best English, the ones who are the most confident, the leaders of our group around the world, they're VIP members. So join Commit to my VIP program today at EffortlessEnglishClub.com and you also will succeed at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Welcome. So let's talk about it. I had a, today I did a, a little stream, a little live stream with the YouTube supporting members. YouTube memberships, that's just a way to support the show, really. Uh, it's just a nice little extra thing that some people do. I appreciate it. And I did a little uh, YouTube live stream with them and talked about this topic. Going to talk about it more now with everybody. Also, by the way, I'm going uh, coming up. We're going to do a live VIP only member webinar, only for VIP members. I'll talk to you about. Well, I'll, we'll discuss the topic later, but I'll be talking only to VIP members and. I'll do use some different software so actually you can talk too, so I can hear you and hear your voices and we can actually have a little conversation. It's very nice. I've done them in the past with VIP members. Going to do that again soon. So if you want to join that, again, join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com right here at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. All right, a quick hi to everybody who's live. Hi, hello, hey, hey. We had our first, I would call it our first spring day today in Japan. Really nice day, very warm day. Uh, it was great, so nice. Ah, that spring temperatures are here. Of course, I'm sure we'll get some cold weather again in the next few weeks. You know, it's up and down in the beginning of spring. March and April can be kind of up and down. But still, overall, feels like spring is coming or spring is just arriving so wonderful i had a long long walk today outside it was great all right let's talk about it you know this coronavirus thing i suspect i don't know what exactly is going on are they using it to crash the economy to influence the election in the united states maybe are they using it to crash economies and to uh, maybe kill uh, political opponents, and maybe. Uh, I don't know what it is. <laughs> is it a bioweapon that escaped? Who knows, okay, guys? So we're just, I'm not going to focus too much on that because there's, there's so many lies. There's so much uh, conflicting, right, opposite information out there that uh, I don't think you need to worry about it. I don't think you need to worry about it too much. But what I do think you should do, I think this is a great opportunity, to practice general disaster preparation because that is something that uh, really everybody, I think, should do. Thank you. Uh, I've lived in earthquake zones for the last, I don't know, 15 years or more. So, uh, you know, that it's always possible an earthquake could hit here in Japan, definitely. And then before that, I lived in San Francisco, another place where an earthquake can happen, could happen, a big one could happen anytime. So it's just a very good idea to always be prepared, right? To always have a preparation just for some kind of disaster, right? And what that means is you have to be prepared that there will be no groceries, that the grocery stores will be empty or mostly empty. 
We have to be prepared that there will be no power, right? That the power will go off and be off for a while. You have to be prepared that you might not have running water. The water might not work coming into your house. The water lines might get broken. Uh, you might have to uh, be prepared for no gas, no you know, no propane, no, no gas coming in if you have a gas stove, for example, for your for cooking. So basically, you have to be prepared that all of these things disappear for a while. And, and no phones, too. No cell phones, no internet. All that. I'll just give you a, a, you know, an example of this. It could be only for a few days. It could be for a few weeks. It could be for several months that this happens. So you've got to be prepared for this situation. It's just it's just a smart thing to do. Everybody should do this. You should always do this at all times. Not just this coronavirus thing, but always have this preparation. You know, I'll give you, you know, on the short end, the a couple of years ago, we had a big typhoon, big, you know, hurricane basically, typhoon hit Osaka. It hit us directly where we live, and we lost power for I think it was 3 days. 2 or 3 days. 3 days. We'll say 3 days. Uh, we had no power. Now, luckily, we still had water and gas, so that, that was okay. But um, but we lost all our power, right? So that means your refrigerator won't work if you lose power. So all the food in your refrigerator, you've got to eat it in, in like a couple of days because it'll all go bad, right? And that means no lights, all of these things. So you have to be prepared. Of course, you know, we were okay. We were, it was no problem. It was a little inconvenient, but wasn't a problem. But uh, you have to be prepared for this, right? If it, what if this happens in the winter, in the middle of the winter, and there's no power, no heat of any kind, no water, no heat, right? Uh, you could lose, as I said, water. This has happened. This happened uh, to my family once when I was a kid. Like I was in middle school. I remember a big snowstorm hit our, where we lived, and all the pipes froze, and then they broke, and so the water went out in like the whole neighborhood in the whole town there was no all the the running water was out gone uh, for several days it was at christmas time too it, it kind of sucked <laughs> we had uh my grandparents and my aunt were visiting us and we had no power i mean no water uh during that time period what do you do how will you survive without water without running water coming into your home right you get the idea what will you do how will you survive this? So you got to think about this. You've got to think about it and be prepared. As I was saying today to the supporting members, a good rule of thumb, if you look at what a lot of disaster preparation people, books, websites will tell you, is that you should be prepared for three months. You should have enough food, water, or ability to get water um, to survive for three months and other things too, which we'll talk about. So you need to be able to survive for about three months without help, without groceries, without power, without running water, etc. Can you do that? Could you do that right now, today? So just imagine today, right now, maybe because of this coronavirus thing, all the groceries become empty and you can't go groceries and maybe, you know, people get sick at the and, and you know, the power goes out or something, something like that. Right. The hospitals would certainly become full of people, even if it's just a panic, if it's not really that serious, still tons of people are going to go to the hospital panicking, which means it's, they're going to be overwhelmed. The staff is going to be too busy to see people. So could you survive? How long could you survive right now without food, running water, power, right? So you have to look like how much food do you have actually right now in your home? Uh, do you have any water in your home? Do you have a way to get clean water if you can't get it from the pipes so you got to think about these things you got to think about these things well, let's talk about it i'm going to give you some advice now first of all i'm going to give you a website a book actually there's this guy he was actually on a tv show in on the discovery channel kind of a, a little bit interesting guy <laughs> But uh, but I think he's got his books are very good about survival. His name is Corey Lundeen. Uh, I think it was called Dual Survival. And he's the guy that always would go around barefoot. And he studied like, you know, Native American, meaning like American Indian uh, techniques and things. Um, 
I don't know. The barefoot thing always seemed weird for me. Like maybe he was doing it for TV or maybe not. But but anyway, the point is that the guy has some very good ideas and he's got two books about survival. So it's Corey Lundin dot Cody. I'm sorry. Cody Lundin. C-O-D-Y L-U-N-D-I-N. C-O-D-Y Cody. His first name. Lundin. L-U-N-D-I-N dot com. Cody Lundin dot com. Anyway, I want to show you his books. The first one I recommend, this is probably the best one for something like coronavirus. It's basically surviving in your home, right? If you live in a city, if you live in the country, whatever. It's not outdoor survival. Outdoor survival is actually much harder, right? That's Outdoor survival is you're driving in the, in the mountains and your car breaks and a big snowstorm comes. Can you live? How can you survive that? for a week, two weeks, right? Until someone finds you. That's hard. That's very tough. That's a lot harder. A lot. Um, this first book is about uh, surviving like disasters while you're in your home, right? At home, which is easier. And it's called When All Hell Breaks Loose is the name of the book. I recommend this book. You can get it as an ebook on Amazon. When All Hell Breaks Loose. And then the rest of the title, Stuff You Need to Survive When Disaster Strikes. So it's about surviving disasters. So for example, one of the examples he mentions is the hurricane that happened in America several years ago uh, called Katrina. Remember, it hit New Orleans. And a lot of people died in that. A lot of people died because they weren't ready. They had no disaster preparation. They were also stupid. They stayed there. They were told they should probably leave, and they, they didn't. But, uh, but anyway... Um, when All Hell Breaks Loose by Co Cody, Cody Lundin. It's really good. It's pretty extreme. I mean, this guy is teaching you how to survive months and months and months with no food, no groceries, nothing. Uh, some things in there are very extreme. <laughs> but, uh, but still, overall, he's got a lot of great advice about things you should always have in your home to survive in these situations. And I don't think you need to do the most extreme things. Probably not. But... Um, but kind of the, the basic information in the book is really good, very solid, and uh, got lots of good advice. So th and this will take away the fear, because if you read a book like this and you, you buy some supplies and you have enough to survive for three months or more, now then you don't get worried about these kind of things. It's not a big deal. You don't fear it. So Cody Lundin. He also has a book about um, surviving outdoors. Uh, which is called 98.6 Degrees, The Art of Keeping Your Ass Alive <laughs> by Cody Lundin. And this is about surviving in the wilderness. So that's about you know, learning how to make fire and, and survive when you don't have much. That's harder. I wouldn't worry about that right now. Anyway, so that's Cody Lundin. So some basic points. I mentioned, I'm just going to go very quickly. I, I talked about some of this today uh, earlier with the supporting members, but some things to think about. What do you need to live? Number one, first thing, of course, you need air, obviously. But number two, you need water, right? You'll die of dehydration before you starve to death. Water is more important than food, far more important. You can fast. You can fast for many days. If you're a little overweight, you can fast for weeks and still be alive. If you're fat, you could probably fast for a few months and still live. <laughs> okay, so food's less important. What's very, very, very important is water. You can only go, you know, maybe what, a week? After a week, you're going to be in bad shape if you have no water. And some people would might die earlier than that. So water, you have to be able to get water. So what happens? The, wa the water breaks. You can't get water in your home. How would you get water? Well, you have to go out somewhere right, in your town and find some water. Maybe there's a pond, maybe there's a little stream, but the problem is it's probably dirty. It probably has bacteria. It's probably going to make you sick. It might have chemicals in it. So you, you need to, first you need to know where can you get water. You have to walk over there and get it. And then you have to make sure it's clean. It's safe to drink, right? So you need some different systems to purify the water. And you can buy 
I mentioned today to members that you can get some a, a little a very small little camping water filter. I like one by it's called Sawyer S A W Y E R. The Sawyer filter is very small. This little water filter, but it takes out most bacteria, most things that will make you sick. Maybe if a few chemicals, but mostly it takes out bacteria. That's the main problem. Uh, another way, a simple way to make the water drinkable is you can get little purification tablets. You can get a bottle and they're basically little tablets of chlorine or iodine and they also will kill bacteria. And so, and then finally, the third way to purify water is just to boil it for a few minutes and that will kill all the bacteria that will make you sick. To take out chemicals, if you live in a city and you're worried about chemicals in the water, you know, if it's really dirty, then you'll need some kind of charcoal filter. You'll have to pour it in. You can buy for your home. So anyway, you just got to think about this. How would you make your water clean? That water is the most important thing. That's number one. Okay, then after, once you have water, what do you need next? Next, I would say, would be staying warm. Staying warm. How do you stay warm if it's cold, right? So I just recommend sleeping bags. Get some sleeping bags. Have sleeping bags or, you know, like in Japan, we have big heavy futons, but also sleeping bags. Just in case you had to walk, you had to like leave your home and go somewhere to be rescued, then, you know, you could carry some light sleeping bags with you and you'd be able to stay warm and be able to uh, survive. I also like a tarp. I mentioned this tarp. It's, it's kind of like a tent, a tent, but no walls and no floor. Again, why do you need that in a disaster? If you're in your home, no problem. But if like, if there's an earthquake, and it's not safe to stay in your home, you might have to walk and you might have to leave. So if you have a tarp, you could kind of camp outdoors and stay dry. So if it's raining, it'll stay dry, you stay warm. If you have a sleeping bag, you can camp and then you'll be safe and you can walk and get out and uh, survive. Okay, next food. You need to have enough food. I mentioned how much food should you have? Uh, you know, if you at least a week, at least one week of food, and probably you know three months i would say if you look at this this uh weird this coronavirus stuff you know you're getting these reports in china they're locking people in their apartments for a month or two months right can you could what if you have no food you're going to starve to death uh so you need to have enough food to survive for i think three months is a good thing to do and you don't need to have you know it doesn't need to be luxury you just have a huge bag of rice a big bag of dried beans, some canned food, maybe some protein powder, you know, like a protein shake that you for bodybuilders use. Maybe just, you know, a few things like that, but enough for three months for your whole family. And then finally, uh, you need a way to cook that stuff. If you're using rice, beans, other like things that need to be cooked, you'll need a stove. And remember, the power might be out. There might be no gas. So how would you cook it? Again, you can use uh, some kind of camping stove. There are different kinds of camping stoves. Some use uh, what's called white gas. Some use propane. You know, they come in these little canisters. But what I recommend is an alcohol stove. Because, for a few reasons. Number one, I'll show you on the video if you're watching. The one, I one, I one of the ones I have. Number one is they're tiny. This is an alcohol stove. You can cook with this. Very, very small. You can see it fits in my hand. One hand. I can hold it. Very light. If I had to, if we had to leave our apartment and walk and go somewhere to get to safety, uh, I could put this in a backpack easily. Uh, it burns alcohol. Just normal alcohol, like drinking alcohol you could use, such as Everclear. You just, uh, you know, it's kind of like almost, it's like 90% alcohol. Hundred. If you can get 100%, that's the best but you can buy like 90%. Uh, so you just pour it in, in there, pour it inside, and then you light it, and then it'll it'll create like a little burner that'll come up. And then you just put, a, put something on top of it, like a little pot for cooking, and then you cook it. You can boil water just to make the water clean. You can cook something. Very nice, very small, not expensive. Alcohol stove. And then, of course, you want fuel, so you want alcohol. Great thing about alcohol, you know, you can drink it. You can uh, <laughs> you can use it for um, it disinfects. Like if you got a cut on your hand, or for example, or you cut on your body, 
you can just pour some alcohol on it, clean it so it won't get infected. Uh, so alcohol has great uses. And then, of course, you use it as fuel. So you might have a few liters of alcohol to use for your stove for cooking. And that's it. And then you'd be set. That would be enough for cooking up your food for, you could easily survive, like I said, for three months with no groceries. All right. Let me put this away one second. And then finally, probably just some first aid. I think first aid would be important to have. You want to have a first aid kit and in case someone gets sick, I recommend having some, uh, a bunch of vitamin D, K, and C. Vitamin D3, vitamin K2, and vitamin C. These three are great for your immune system uh, against keeping you strong against bacteria, viruses, anything like that. So in case, you know, the hospitals are too full, you can't, then you want to be able to keep your body strong by yourself. So these are, they're, all three of them are quite cheap. But you can buy just a huge bag of vitamin C online. And like There's bulk, B-U-L-K, just large bags. You can buy big bottles of uh, large doses of vitamin D and same with vitamin K, K2 specifically. Uh, and these will all keep you nice and strong. So you don't, against viruses and bacteria. Oh, finally, maybe a light. I mentioned this before. You probably want a light because at night, if there's no power, uh, you need to find things, so it's also good uh, to have some way of having light. So I use these little headlamps, which you can see if you're watching on video. I like these little tiny ones. This is from a company called Petzl, P-E-T-Z-L. It's an LED. I like the LED. Uh, this is a headlamp. You can see there's a string goes around my head, holds it on my head so I can use both my hands. Uh, if there was no light, I could use this. It's super light, super tiny, very small. And the LEDs, the batteries last a very long time. I, the battery for this probably lasted five years. I just recently changed it. So that's a long time. Now, I wasn't using it very much. So you probably want to have some backup batteries too, just in case. And that is it. All right, let's go to the comments and questions now. If any of you have questions or comments about, again, about just general preparation disaster. It's just good. This is what's called anti-fragile. I did. A, I have a, a VIP lesson about this. And it's just a matter of just being prepared, right? Usually, probably the worst will not happen. Probably a disaster will not happen to you or your family. But if one does happen, and they do happen, we know they happen all around the world, you know, every year, um, you want to be prepared. Because if you're not prepared, you could die. Your family members could die. It could be a really, really horrible, bad thing. But if you're prepared, it's not such a problem. If you're prepared, you'll be okay. Right? So that's what I'm saying. There's, do not fear. Do not panic. Just be prepared. Right? Instead of getting all worried about all the crazy stuff in the news, it doesn't matter what it is, what they're talking about. They're always trying to make us afraid, afraid, afraid all the time. Don't be afraid. Don't panic. Just be prepared. Be prepared always for anything. And then you don't need to fear. You can just relax. All right, let's get into our comments and questions live. Okay. Uh, Alaman Ali says, how many days can a young person survive without food or drinking water? Well, it really depends. It's hard to say, okay? First of all, let's talk about water because water is the one that's shortest. I don't know exactly. Like I did a three-day dry fast. So no water, no food for three days. I was okay, but I started getting tired. I was starting to feel kind of weak. Um, how long could I go? I don't know. I'm not trying to kill myself. <laughs> so, um, uh, Cole Robinson, the snake diet guy, I think he did a seven day. He did a seven day dry fast. So he did seven days of fasting with no water and no food. So he survived seven days and he, he, was, he didn't die. Um, it helps. The more this here's this is one moment <laughs> when being a little fat is actually good. If you're more fat, you can survive longer even without water, because your body can 
create water from fat, actually. You can, your, your body can break and uh, use the fat in your body for, obviously, for food, you know, for energy. And it also can use your fat to make water. There's water in your fat. So if you're kind of fat, if you're kind of heavy, if you're overweight, you can actually survive longer. If you're really, really thin, right, you can see your abs, right, you don't have, you almost have no fat, then you cannot survive as long. You have, it's, it's a shorter number of days for food and for water. Like a, for water, you know, a week, I would say, is probably the most. After that, mm, I think a lot of people will be in bad shape, maybe die. Um, yeah. Of course, it, again, it depends on the temperature. It depends on a lot of things, but let's say about a week, you know. Um, and that's if you're just laying around doing nothing. Now, food is, is less of a problem. Like, I, I don't know. I could easily go a week without food and be fine um that really does depend on how fat you are if you're very 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 thin normally that's good and healthy right but uh in this case for survival it actually helps to have fat if you're a fat person you could you could survive months without eating so i can't really give you a, a I think almost anybody can go at least a couple, a few weeks without eating and be okay. But if you're very, very, very thin already with no fat, then you, you have a shorter time you could survive without food. Still, overall, it's best not to be fat. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I mean, that's why we have fat. It's one of the main reasons we have fat, you know, to keep warm. But, you know, this is why animals get fatter before the winter. Because they know in the winter they're going, they'll have very little food, and they need to survive the whole winter. So they they kind of get bigger and fatter to survive without food for the winter, right? That's the natural way. Yeah, like this is a great idea. Tanishka White says, uh, in my family we have a prepared backpack with all the vital stuff, because. Uh, there's been a war of five years in my area. Any amount of forces can come back in our city. Exactly. It could also be war. It could be terrorism. It could be artificial disasters like that also. And this is a good idea, to, by the way, what Tanishka said, is that when you gather all this stuff, you know, your food, your water, everything you're going to need, it's a very good idea to put it all together. It's a, it's a super good idea to put it in backpack, a backpack or backpacks. Right. If you need more than one, if you have a, like a bigger family, because then you can just grab it and leave if you need to. Like if you suddenly needed to leave, let's say, uh, I don't know, like in Japan, you live on the coast and a tsunami is coming and then you hear the alarm and you only have like 10, 15 minutes. You've got to run. There's no time to look around and find stuff. Well, if you just if it's all already organized in one backpack, you just grab it and run out the door. Right. Same thing if there's like, like she said, there's, they've had war in her area. So if you know, oh, there's an attack coming, we got to get out of here. You just grab your backpack and, and you go. Everybody just leaves. You can, you can leave immediately. You got everything you need. People call this a bug out bag. And you'll see in, on survival video websites and people who focus on this kind of topic, they call it a bug out bag. It's kind of slang. Yeah, like Funda says, we have earthquakes, extreme, uh, a lot of earthquakes here in the east part of Turkey. Right. So Japan, we have earthquakes here and uh, tsunamis. Where I live, it's both could happen. <laughs> this is a possible tsunami zone. It's close enough to the ocean that a tsunami could hit here. And uh, we also are definitely in an earthquake zone. <laughs> Zupiar says, yeah, in Australia, most people worry about toilet it tissue. You know, you can stock up on toilet tissue as well. Yeah, it's one of the things you could stock up on that if you want.
Okay, let's see. Yeah, like Bertalan. I tend to think Bertalan's cor correct here. Media is exaggerating the coronavirus. People who got the virus, only 2% died. The 80% don't even know they got it. Yeah, see, this is the problem, right? The numbers are all nonsense. All the numbers are nonsense because there might be actually a huge number of people have it, right? Many more because it's only the number that they test. The numbers we see in the media, that's the number of people they test. They're not testing most people. Like in America, almost nobody's tested. They could have huge numbers of people have it and they don't even realize they have it. They just have a normal cold or it feels like they have a normal cold or flu. It's no big deal. They get better. They don't even realize they had it. So I, I tend to think it's probably correct. I think it's actually less than 2% dead. 2% dead would be actually a very high number. A 2% death rate is actually quite high, um, but I doubt it's that high. I think it's much, 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 much lower than that. So, but, you know, every, all these governments are lying and all the media is lying. So it's really hard to know <laughs> what is really happening. All I know is the, re, the, the official story is a lie. What the truth is, I can't say. Yeah, Amine says Japan is more prepared in case of earthquake than many countries. Definitely. And the population, not only the government. Yes, people here are all kind of trained to uh, be prepared. To, they all know that they could, that an earthquake can hit. So they, most people, are, they're much more prepared for disasters. That's correct. So like nobody's panicking here about the coronavirus. They're just wearing masks. <laughs> a lot of them. Okay, let's see. Yeah, here's a good... Now, see, this is something I think is a, is great. Farhad says, here in Iran, schools are closed. Yes, in Japan too. Teachers are looking for online tools for teaching. Please explain about software using for this show, other equipment needed for this purpose. See, this is one of the great things. This might help to break the schools. I hope it, I hope it damages the schools. Maybe students will realize. Maybe parents will realize. We don't need these schools, right? We can just learn at home. I think it's great. It might help online education. Um, I don't know. For technology, this software, it's just um, it's just YouTube Live. Just You can just stream on YouTube. I mean, that's the easiest. I am using some software, but you don't have to use. You can just use the software on uh, that's because uh, the software depends on what kind of computer you have. So I, I can't, I'm not going to give you specific software advice because there uh, depends if you have, you know, what what if you're Apple or Windows or whatever. Uh, but it doesn't matter. You can just do it straight from YouTube inside of YouTube. You can just stream. Right. So. You can do it on YouTube. You can stream live on that. You could do it live. You could stream on Facebook and do your classes on Facebook, streaming live. You could do it on. Uh, I don't know. You could create a WhatsApp group and stream your class on WhatsApp. Any any social media that does video, or you don't even have to stream if you don't want to do live. You could just record it, just on a camera, and then upload it to a website or YouTube or you know, bit shoot, any, any of these video play, uh, channels. So it, yeah, it's really simple, actually. It doesn't require any kind of great technology. Yeah, like Priscilla Candido says, it's important to be prepared, as you said, but no need to be uh, afraid. H1N1 didn't happen after all the panic. It's also a very dangerous disease. Indeed, don't panic. Don't panic. Don't fear. Just be prepared. Okay. Yeah, I tend to think Vladimir Medvedev is also right. They want us. They don't want us to notice other problems. It's all manipulation. I definitely think that's 
what's going on. I think this is a distraction. I think it's a few things. Number one, I think they're trying to collapse the global economy. I think they're trying to bring down the economy for evil reasons. What I don't know why. We'll see what they try to do. After the economy drops, what will they try to do? But that's one thing I think they're trying to do. And then maybe there's other things happening that they're trying to distract from. I don't know. It's, it sucks, but... Yeah, and see, then there's the other side of it, like Vladislav says. In Russia, official statistics say only seven people have it, but the actual number is thousands. Right, but they've only tested, right? So how many people have it that have not been tested? How many people have it and don't realize they have it? In fact, they had it. They thought it was just a normal cold. It's already recovered, and they, they'll never know that they actually had it, right? So who knows? could be thousands it could be already millions could have gotten it and and be over it uh it's a unrelated question but i'll answer it what do you think about traveling uh when you're 16 years old yeah you can do it just be careful be careful be confident do your research where you're going and you know be careful about safety and crime that kind of thing but i think it'll be great good luck to you <laughs> yeah this sounds like italians i live in italy roberto says, uh, I'm a chef. Schools are closed, but people are eating out in restaurants altogether. And they're traveling. <laughs> so you can see, I think, you know, most people are not panicking. I think somehow people know. Okay. Yeah, like, here's here's another example. Vladislav says, uh, when I was at, in the 10th grade, we didn't go to school for a month because we, because uh, of frost, negative 30 degrees Celsius. Yikes. <laughs> negative 30. It was very nice, I remember. Then it was difficult to get used to school again. Yeah, I know, like, I'll, I'm sure all the kids are celebrating this corona thing because, wow, what a, how lucky they are to get school canceled. I would have loved it when I was a kid if they canceled school for a month. Wow, that would be great. <laughs> so lucky kids. The kids are lucky. They're probably, the kids should have a big party. Thank you, Corona. Yeah, like Alamin Ali said, this is the case. I heard a lot of different interpretations about the coronavirus. Now I'm a bit confused about the virus as one media explains it one way and another a completely different way. This is how you know it's a lie, right? Because they're lying, they're lying, they're lying. And there's, it's all, it's, you know, they're lying, they're exaggerating, they're doing it for political reasons. Some groups are making it sound horrible, like we're all going to die. Everyone's going to die. And then other groups, oh, nothing's wrong. Don't worry about it. So it's, you know, there's something, something strange is going on with this. It's not just a normal, you know, it's not just some kind of disease. I don't, I don't trust the media. I know they're lying. That's all I know. Now, what, what's really happening? I don't know. Right. It's it's pretty impossible to really know what's happening with it at the moment. Right. Just know they're lying. <laughs> so just be prepared. OK. Basic preparation is what you have to do. It's all you can do anyway. You know, it's the same like an earthquake. You can, uh, you know, there's no need to just be terrified all the time that an earthquake might happen or a giant fire. Like in California, they have fires that come and they burn up whole huge areas. Even whole towns get burned up by fires, forest fires and other fires. Um, tsunami, right? I lived in Thailand during the, that, the huge tsunami, the uh, Asian tsunami. So that, I mean, that, they, no one expected that, right? Um, 
yeah, so these things happen. And again, like, you know, economic uh, disasters, all kinds of things are possible. So just be prepared, have a basic preparation and a basic plan, and you'll, you're going to be all right. Just, you don't have to, don't panic, don't fear. Yeah, I think Elena is correct. If we turn off the TV, don't look at Facebook, I'm sure the coronavirus will disappear. It'll disappear from your mind, right? It's just, it's... I mean, do you, do you know anybody who has it? Do you, have you know, right? Have you, do you know anyone who's died from it? If not, then just relax, okay? Relax. Do just be prepared. That's all. No need to panic. Yeah, no, says the media is more dangerous than the coronavirus. I agree. I agree. Hmm. Let's see. Priscilla recommending a book. Have you read the book called White Noise by Don DeLeo? It's an amazing book. Talks about the bad power of media. It's great. I'll, I'll check it out. I have not read it, but it sounds very good. Thank you. Yeah, see, like Hadi says, it's another possibility. I think coronavirus doesn't like hot weather. That's what Trump said. And he might have some information about that. That And this is flu, the flu in general. Is it hot weather? See, this is one theory, is it, it's the heat. But my theory is it's actually vitamin D. Right? Because what happens when it gets hot? People go outdoors, we get vitamin D from the sun, right? The sun on your skin your body creates vitamin D, which increases in your body. It makes your immune system strong. So in the winter, people don't go outside as much and they're covered in clothes. So vitamin D levels drop. Your immune system drops. That's why the flu every year, this, the, these, this, they call it flu season. It's always the winter. So um, you can just go, you, you know. If it's warm enough, go outside and get sun every day, get that vitamin D up. And if it's not warm enough, then just buy some vitamin D and K2 and take them together. Get Keep the vitamin D levels in your body high. Very good against viruses. Oh, my birthday, Elena. Yeah, my birthday's coming up, March 23rd, and I'll be 52. <laughs> okay, a couple more, and then I'm going to go. Yeah, I got I only have time for a couple more. I have to go take care of babies, as always. Hey, there's... Uh, Carol says, living in the countryside can be a big advantage in such times. You can grow your food. You can even produce your own electricity. Some people are completely independent from the rest of the world. Indeed, I agree. You know, uh, the more you're out in the country, it does give you that. It's for all different kinds of disasters and things, right? Exactly. You can grow your own food. You could get solar panels if you wanted to uh, or have a generator. You know, a lot of it's, this is called homesteading. A lot of people do it in America where they uh, just, they completely leave the modern economy, more or less. They just grow their own food. They, they kind of make everything themselves in their own, uh, in their own home, kind of living like people did, you know, 100 years ago. And they're very independent and self-reliant. It's great. Good for them. Very good. How do we survive if you decide to stop effortless English? Well, I won't. As long as I'm alive, we'll keep going. Ah, Vladislav, your dad will turn 54. Nice. So we're very similar in age. All right, guys. I'm going to go. So, again, the basic message. 
be prepared. Just be prepared in general. It's a good life thing to do. Just always be prepared. So then when all these things in the media try to scare you, maybe, you know, different disasters, different situations, uh, you know, every four years there's a new virus, Ebola and SARS, and now it's the coronavirus. And, you know, they always in the news, always it's disasters, disasters, disasters all the time. So just be prepared, right? And do some research. I gave you some basic ideas, but you can get on um, you can get on video like YouTube or BitChute. There are some great channels of people who um, are focused on survival, outdoor survival, and urban, you know, city survival. There are some great books. I mentioned Cody Lundin. He's got a, his books are both very good. There's a ton of information. I mean, there are, there are people who are really serious about this. <laughs> there are people who, you know, prepare. They have like a, one year they can survive with nothing. You know, everything. Just every. They have one year of supply in their home. And as Carol said, there are people actually who can survive their whole life without the grocery store, without power, without anything. They're completely, you know, self-sufficient, we say. So... Anyway, the point is that they, uh, these people, a lot of these people, they do, they have YouTube channels and podcasts and books. So you can learn, I mean, you can go deep in this if you want to and read very deeply. Or why, the reason I recommend Cody Lundin's books, they're just for kind of everybody like you and me, uh, just giving you the basic information. How do you survive? The first thing is be prepared in this in the city in your home how do you survive for three months if there's a disaster if there's a quarantine right if they won't let you travel if if the grocery stores are empty for three months how do you survive in your home and then if you get into it if you do traveling if you if you go hiking and camping if you're if you drive out in the wilderness sometimes well then you can also learn about wilderness survival like what happens if you get lost in the mountains can you survive? You know, how long can you could you live if you were lost in the mountains or in the desert or you know anywhere out in the wilderness? Could you live? How long could you survive until someone found you or you could get back to civilization, right? So there's that's a different kind of survival that's more difficult, but you can learn about that. It's very useful too. You know, I know a little bit about that because I used to do uh, a lot of camping, but uh, you can lots of books about that too. So anyway, just read, learn about it, see this as an opportunity to learn about health and taking care of your own health. Don't depend on doctors in the hospital. See this as an opportunity to learn a little more about disaster preparation and maybe survival and to be prepared. And then do not fear. Do not fear. Do not fear. All right, join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Commit, don't quit. You will succeed at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. See you next time.